Good morning. morning. Welcome to beautiful Savior Lutheran Church. This morning we are privileged to have students from St. Mark Lutheran Church and family members with us. Because we are celebrating the Lord's Supper this morning for our brothers and sisters from St. Mark, we would gladly and, and happily welcome you to join us at the Lord's table. And just know that when we serve communion here, we will place the wafer and the individual cup in your hands when you come forward. This morning we're going to talk about how Jesus' future return impacts us in in the moment now and in our present difficulties and struggles. That's what this morning's sermon will be about. Everything you should need to worship with us, you should find either on the screens behind me or in your worship folders. And now if everything is ready, come let us worship the Lord together. Great job, everyone. That was fantastic. At this time, we will also have our children's talk. So any other children that are with us this morning are welcome to come up front. 
on either side this morning and make yourselves feel comfortable. Sit right here on the floor. That's good. Sure, sit down in front here. That's nice. Okay, are we all ready? Good. Oh, wow, we have a really big group of children today. That's wonderful. Thank you, boys and girls. You did a nice job of singing. That was wonderful. Mr. Schneider and I have some good friends their names are Ginny and Jim. And Ginny and Jim used to live in Green Bay where we live, but now they live far away in a place called New York. But you know, they always like to come back here. And one day we got a letter from them and they said, we're going to be there on Wednesday at three o'clock Oh, we were so excited that our friends were coming, but Mr. Schneider looked at, and I looked at each other and said, we've got to get ready. What do you think were some of the things that we were going to do to get ready for our friends? Anybody want to take, do you have an idea? Clean my house? Exactly, that was the first thing that I thought of. What else do you think of? Okay, that would be cleaning my house. One more thing. Set up some tables, all right. What I was thinking about was we had to go shopping. We had to get some food for when our friends came and perhaps some snacks too, right? And then when Wednesday came, 3 o'clock, we were at the airport to pick up our friends and we were ready. Now, you know, the Bible also tells us that one day our good friend Jesus is also going to come back, come back for us. But, but this is the thing that's different. We do not know the day that Jesus is coming. We do not know the time that he's coming. But there's one thing we do know. God wants us to be ready. Now, that doesn't mean that God wants us to go and vacuum. He doesn't want us to go shopping. No, that's not what getting ready means. It means to get our hearts ready for Jesus to come. Can you put your hand on your heart, please? Let's talk about getting our hearts ready today. Where, where are you boys and girls right now? Where are we? At We're in church, right. And why do we come to church? Why do we come? Yes, to learn, to learn about Jesus and to hear God's word, right? When we hear about Jesus and learn God's word, we're getting our hearts ready. What did our special friends from St. Mark do this morning, boys and girls? What did they do? They came and what did they do for us? What did they do? You sang that beautiful song for us. When we sing songs of praise for Jesus, hymns in church, or when you sing at school or at home, you're getting your heart ready for Jesus. Every time you fold your hands and pray, you're getting your hearts ready. When we love God above more than anything, anyone in the world, when we love our moms and dads, when we listen to them, when we look at it, when we're kind to our friends and caring to our friends and we, we love them, when we speak kindly to mom and dad and people we don't even know, we're, we're good to them and nice to them, that's all making our hearts ready just to come, right? One day, Jesus is going to come. Do we know when? No. no. Do we know the time? No. no, we don't. 
But we do know that when we do all those things that we just talked about, our hearts are going to be ready. So let's close today with a prayer, all right? Hold your hands, please. Dear Jesus, I want to be ready for you. Please fill my heart with love and joy as I wait for you to come. In your name we pray, amen. Now my little friends from St. Mark, Mrs. Ellingbo already has something for you. She's going to give it to you tomorrow when you go to school, all right? So you may go back and sit by your moms and dads right now, all right? And my, and my beautiful Savior friends, you know you can go in the back and Joey has something for you, okay? Thank you. Please stand. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. God invites us to come into his presence and worship him with humble and penitent hearts. Therefore, let us acknowledge our sinfulness and ask him to forgive us. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins. And trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given his only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For all that we need in life and for the wisdom to use all your gifts with gratitude and joy, hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the steadfast assurance that nothing can separate us from your love and for the courage to stand firm against the assaults of Satan and every evil, hear our prayer, O Christ. Christ, have mercy for the well-being of your holy church in all the world, and for those who offer here their worship and praise, hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Merciful God, maker and preserver of life, uphold us by your power and keep us in your tender care. Amen. Please be seated. God comes to us this morning first through his word and later he'll feed us through his supper. Our first lesson is recorded in Paul's letter to the believers in Thessalonica as a reminder that Jesus is indeed returning and that while it can be fearful for some, for those of us who believe it will be a day of great joy and expectation. All this is evidence that God's judgment is right and as a result you will be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which you are suffering. God is just. He will pay back trouble to those who trouble you and give relief to you who are troubled and to us as well. This will happen when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven in blazing fire with powerful angels. He will punish those who do not know God and do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus. They will be punished with everlasting destruction and shut out from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his might on the day he comes to be glorified in his holy people and to be marveled at among all those who have believed. This includes you because you believed our testimony 
to you. This is the word of the Lord. Our gospel reading for this morning is recorded in Luke chapter 19. Several of these verses will also serve as the basis for our meditation. Please note that we will read these verses responsively. I will read verses, we will have a reader, and the congregation will also participate. Out of respect for Jesus and his word and work among us, please stand. While they were listening to this, he went on to tell them a parable. Because he was near Jerusalem and the people thought that the kingdom of God was going to appear at once. He said, A man of noble birth went to a distant country to have himself appointed king and then to return. So he called ten of his servants and gave them ten minas. But his subjects hated him and sent a delegation after him to say, He was made king, however, and returned home. Then he sent for the servants to whom he had given the money in order to find out what they had gained with it. The first one came and said, Well done, my... The second came and said, His master answered. Then another servant came and said, His master replied, Then he said to those standing by, Take this mina away from him and give it to the one who has ten minas. Sir, he said, he already has ten. He replied, I tell you that to everyone who has, more will be given. But as for the one who has nothing, even what they have will be taken away. This is the gospel of our Lord. Please be seated.
Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Once again, we're going to read words from Luke, Luke chapter 19. For now, we will read verses 11 through 13. While they were listening to this, he went on to tell them a parable because he was near Jerusalem and the people thought that the kingdom of God was going to appear at once. He said, A man of noble birth went to a distant country to have himself appointed king and then to return. So he called ten of his servants and gave them ten minas. Put this to work, put this money to work, he said, until I come back. Here ends our reading. My brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. Somewhere there is a former student who quit on her studies. Somewhere there is an, a former employee who quit on his sobriety. Somewhere there is a former head of a household who quit on his family and walked out the door. Somewhere there is a former confirmand who quit on her church. The, the world that you and I live in is filled with formers. And one thing that every one of them has in common is that something that used to be important at one time in his or her life is no longer important in his or her life. And so the person took a towel and threw it in and walked away. And they quit on their promises, on their sobriety, on their school, on their family, they quit on their faith and maybe even on their God. Now one of the things that I, I don't want to happen is that this would be some kind of let's pile on the quitters. Because I'm going to guess that if right now you are in a position where you are either contemplating quitting or you already have quit, the very last thing you need is to be overwhelmed because of something that some pastor has said. What I would like to do is to have a sermon that is so saturated with compassion that it begins to mirror the words of Jesus, especially when he looked and he saw a large group of people who was following them, him, and he knew because he could see into their hearts that they were on the verge of quitting. And do you remember what Jesus said? It wasn't criticizing. It wasn't critical. It wasn't pull yourself up by your own boot snap, snap straps. <laughs> Rather, he said, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Sometimes in life, the assignment seems too big, the expectations seem too high, the road seems too long, and then quitting not only seems preferable to going on, but quitting seems inevitable. But Quitting doesn't have to be inevitable. And it doesn't have to be inevitable because of some of the words that we find in our parable today. Jesus tells a story that revolves around a man who went away to a faraway country. But before he did, he gathered his servants together and he gave them each some cash money. And that cash money was, was called a mina. And he then packed up, headed down the road, but before he did, he yelled behind him, put this money to work until I come back, and poof, he was gone. 
Now, for the servants there, there were three certainties. There were three things they knew for sure. Number one, they had cash money in their hands. Number two, they had an expectation from their master. Number three, they also had his promise that at some time in the future, he was going to return. Now, against those three certainties, there was one great big uncertainty. The uncertainty was, when exactly was he going to return? Now, now two of the servants, they, they knew about their master. They knew what kind of man he was and, and how demanding he was. And so they decided that what they better do was uh, to get busy and to start working because they knew that he was a hard man. Sure enough, one day, that master did return. And when he returned, he wanted to know exactly what those servants were doing why, while he was gone. And so he brought them all in, and he lined them all up, and here's where we pick up our story. First one came to him and said, Sir, your mina has earned ten more. Well done, my good servant, his master replied. Because you have been trustworthy in a very small matter, take charge of ten cities. The second came and said, Sir, your mina has earned five more. His master answered, You take charge of five cities. All, all well and good. All well and good until the last servant comes in. And once again, the master asked him the very same question. I, I entrusted you with something. What exactly did you do with it before I returned? All that servant had to say was, I have kept it laid away in a piece of cloth. That's a pretty big uh-oh. That servant had tapped out, as the saying goes. Are you in danger of tapping out on a promise on your sobriety on your schoolwork on your promise to live your life differently are you in danger of tapping out on your faith or on your God the idea of tapping out is when you see something in your present or in your future and it seems so monumental that when you look inside and you see the resources that you have at this moment, it doesn't look like it is possibly enough to tackle what you have to do. I'll tell you something, though, about that desire to quit. That is something that Jesus understands. And we know that he understands, and not only understands, but also empathizes because of some words that were written in the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way we are, yet did not sin. You know what I see here? I see a very human Jesus, a very relatable Jesus. True God, of course true God, but also human. And I don't think that there is any other place in Scripture that I see where he is as identifiably human as it was when he was contemplating his upcoming suffering and death. Because it was while he was doing that, he said these words. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Overwhelmed? No, no wonder. 
when I think of what God was asking him to do, to give up his very life on the cross for something that he did not do, no wonder he felt overwhelmed. There must have been that that very human part of Jesus who said at this moment, I will give you anything but not this. Jesus didn't quit, though. And why? Have you ever asked yourself why it would be that, that Jesus would not quit in all of those times that you and I have quit? It is because he was so connected to his Father. He was so uh, convinced of the plan of salvation. He was so certain of the Holy Spirit's power that he had the strength not to quit. And he knew that one day he was going to return. Are you in danger of tapping out? Jesus was, and then he didn't. Maybe you're thinking right now, boy, pastor, that's, that's just great. But my reality is a little different because I have quit. I have quit on my promises. I have quit on my family. I have, from time to time, quit on my faith. I know you have. And the reason I know you have is because I know that I have. But Jesus was not only an example of someone who refused to quit, he was the solution for those of us who have. Jesus didn't quit because he knew of all the times that you and I were going to. You are his own dear child. You are his own dear, forgiven child. And child, the king returns. Just like he promised in that parable, one day the king is going to return. And I'll tell you what that means for you. It means that no matter in what way you are struggling today, there is going to come a day when that king returns and your struggle will be over. I'll tell you what it means for you. It means that one day the king does return and any pain that you are going through right now will be over. May I offer you a suggestion? When you are struggling and you are getting ready to throw in the towel, I want you to say this phrase, the king does return. I don't know, maybe this is something that you have to to write down on a piece of, of paper or tape it to a mirror. When you are at your most desperate and you cannot figure out how you are going to be able to get through another day, much less another hour or another minute, then repeat this like a mantra. The the king does return. The king does return. The king does return. I don't know. Maybe you want to think about getting that as some sort of tattoo. But wait till you're 12. (laughs) I think there's some sort of regulations for stuff like that. You see, just like in the parable, that king is coming back. And that king is coming back to confirm for you something that he has already predestined for you. You see, you are forgiven. And with your forgiveness comes salvation. And with your salvation comes empowerment, and with your power comes strength. And that's going to be the strength that you are going to need. It was the strength that Abraham had 
when God told him he wanted him to go to a country that Abraham had never seen before. It was the strength that Joseph had when he resisted Potiphar's wife. It was the strength that St. Stephen had when those rocks were being whipped at his head. It was the strength that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had when mighty, wicked King Nebuchadnezzar said, if you do not worship me, I will take all three of you and I will throw you into a fiery furnace. And Do you remember what Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said? They said, oh, King Nebuchadnezzar, you go ahead and throw us into that fire. But we are not going to worship anything rather than the true God. It was their strength. And it is your strength. Shall we pray? Dear Father in heaven, there are times in probably everyone's life where we, we hit that, that juncture where we're not sure that we have the resources to keep going. And we think of some aspect in our life that we simply want to walk away from and quit. For all of those times that we have, we have you as not only an example, but a solution. And then Lord, on behalf of of anybody who right now is contemplating throwing in the towel and quitting, remind them that they have the strength that you have always given to your children and that ultimately whatever struggles they have will come to an end because you, Lord, will return. And when you return, you will return as our king. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please rise. Now may the peace of God, which goes beyond all understanding, keep both your hearts and your minds in and through Christ Jesus. Amen. We continue now with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. We continue now with our thanks to God in the form of our financial offerings.
Please stand for prayer. Lord of the Church, we thank you for answering our prayers by leading Pastor Ehler to stay here and continue to serve as pastor of beautiful Savior Lutheran Church. We pray that you would continue to grant him the wisdom to use faithfully the gifts you have given him to fulfill his ministry among us. Lord, we continue to pray. Help us honor and respect him as your gift to our congregation. Continue to enable us to work together with him. Enable all our called workers to work together in a spirit of harmony and love so that your kingdom may flourish among us and come also to the hearts of others. To the glory of your holy name, amen. And we join. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. As we prepare to celebrate your Holy Supper, we recognize that we are not worthy to be guests at your table, but you are the friend of sinners, and you will not cast us out. This bread is your body, which bore my sins upon the tree. This wine is your blood, which purifies me from all death. At your invitation, we come rejoicing. Receive us, dear Savior, in your mercy. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Please be seated. Should your dietary needs require there is alcohol-free wine and gluten-free wafers, they will be on the tray as you approach the altar. At the direction of the ushers, please come forward for all things are now ready.
We now prepare to leave in the joy and strength of the Lord. Please stand. We read responsively from Psalm 90. Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. You turn people back to dust, saying, Return to dust, you mortals. A thousand years in your sight are like a day that has just gone by, or like a watch in the night. Yet you sweep people away in the sleep of death. They are like the new grass of the morning. In the morning it springs up new, but by evening it is dry and withered. We are consumed by your anger and terrified by your indignation. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your presence. All our days pass away under your wrath. We finish our years with a moan. Our days may come to 70 years or 80 if our strength endures. If only we knew the power of your anger. Teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Relent, Lord, how long will it be? Have compassion on your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with your unfailing love that we may sing for joy and be glad all our days. May the favor of the Lord our God rest on us. Establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. Receive now with believing hearts the Lord's benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Please be seated. Once again, a good morning to you all and a special good morning and welcome to those who are with us as guests, especially those who are with us from St. Mark, especially the first graders. Thank you so much for leading us in that beautiful song and edifying us in worship. Uh, A couple of quick announcements.